This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. Hey, Carm Capriato, the Automotive Aftermarket Podcast Guy. Hey, welcome to a great dose of Aftermarket Audio Nirvana. Hey, I get a lot of requests to recommend things, especially business coaches. Now, you know how much I believe in having a business coach. Well, I do not recommend business coaches at all, as I must be neutral, like the country of Sweden. So many coaches bring their wisdom right here on the podcast to you, and for that, I'm grateful, and I love them all. What I do do is give a link to all episodes that I've done with our industry's business coaches. Now, in this case, shop owner Rick Williams asked me, and and I gave him the link, and I went on to ask Rick, if he would pick three and allow an interview with him and these three coaches as a sort of opportunity for shop owners without a coach to hear what goes on inside the coach hiring process. Shop owner Rick Williams of Rick's Automotive was kind enough to agree to do this, and he chose Bill Haas of Haas Performance Consulting, Bob Greenwood of Automotive Aftermarket E-Learning Center, and David Justice from Repair Shop of Tomorrow. Hey, thanks to our sponsors that make this episode possible for you. You know, the Virtual Apex Experience 2020 is in the record books. And I got to say that Virtual Apex lived up to presenting leading technical and business management training from some of the industry's best and brightest. Now, set your sights on the homecoming in Las Vegas in 2021. Mark your calendar. Do it now. November 2nd through the 4th, 2021. Apex. You know, now more than ever. Now, wow your customers while keeping your distance, even while staying six feet apart, Shopware's innovative technology will help you move cars through safely and efficiently. Completely digital workflow allows customers to review, approve, and pay for repairs all in one place. Request a demo at GetShopware.com. This is an episode that I've always wanted to do, and I thank Rick, David, Bob, and Bill for giving so that all ships rise. Now, after listening, this may be just the medicine you need to make the first move and hire yourself a business coach. You can't afford not to. You can find Rick, Bob, Bill, and David's other episodes and the key talking points for this episode at RemarkableResults.biz slash E596. Enjoy. Hey, a warm welcome to Rick Williams from Rick's Automotive, Cincinnati, Ohio. Hello, Rick. Hey, Carm. Pleasure being here. I'm so glad you're here, man. Uh, There's a long story that goes with this, and uh, I'm not sure I'm going to tell it right now because there's so much to to do in this uh, as we're looking to hire a business coach. I've always wanted to do a show like this, and uh, Rick Williams from Rick's Automotive in Cincinnati, you're providing us uh, an avenue to do this. Also with us is Bill Haas from Haas Performance Consulting, Bob Greenwood from the Automotive Aftermarket E-Learning Center, and David Justice from Repair Shops of Tomorrow. Now, Rick Williams selected these three business coaches to be here. I had nothing to do with it. Rick sent me an email, and he says, Carm, recommend a coach. I'd, I'd like to hire a coach. And I said, no, I'm Sweden. I'm very neutral. I love all my my coaching friends, the, the ones that have, you know, of course, supported the show for, for five years now and brought their great wisdom. And I said, so here's a link to all the coaches that I've ever interviewed. He comes back two or three weeks later. I mean, Rick, this has been going on for three months with you and I, right? Yeah. He picked three. We have them on here. So guys, uh, happy to have you. Rick is in need of a business coach. He'd love to have one. He's in business for a very short amount of time. And apparently he recognized he would love some help because he doesn't know what he doesn't know. I mean, that's the right reason, right? I want this to be a give and take as the audience, you learn what a interaction, if you will, with, between a shop owner and a business coach. And, and, you know, Rick, we're not asking for you to pick a coach at the end. Maybe one day, you know, you're going to say, hey, I, I selected a coach or I didn't select a coach. I want this to uh, just be the kind of show that helps people break the ice in how they could attempt and start a relationship with a business coach. Bill and David and Bob didn't know who Rick was until this past weekend, and and I finally sent him their bio. He's been able to listen to these guys. So it's kind of like, hi, ring, 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 pick up the phone. Hi, Bill, this is Rick Williams. Uh, let's talk. 
and we picked straws in the beginning to find out which coach would go first, second, and third. And uh, Bob's going to be first, David's going to be second, and Bill's going to back clean up. But guys, I want this to be conversational. It doesn't mean that we don't keep going around the room while we, we interact with each other and we ask questions from both sides. So, Rick, I'm going to turn this show over to you. I'm going to sleep in the corner, letting you guys do your thing. And it's you and Bob. So, Rick, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Carm. Mr. Greenwood, I have... uh, Rick, just call me Bob. All right, Bob. Um, I have listened to many of Carm's podcasts with you on them. I must say that you are uh, least viewed as for as far as how Carm puts it as a numbers guy in the industry. I come from a numbers background as well as uh, when I worked for the dealership, I was very involved in the day-to-day numbers as a service manager for my service department. So I am very familiar with the metrics and the, and the uh, benchmarks for that industry. However, bridging over to the, autom- the aftermarket automotive industry, I am not quite as understanding as far as those numbers go. And I, I was looking to maybe pick your brain on some of that stuff and how you could help me based off the, si- the current situation where I am in business and where I want to go. Dealership world, yeah, labor gross and hours per hour productivity, um, effective labor rates, I want to start with a good foundation before I go too, too much further in business. Car mentioned, I've only been doing this for about a year and a half now. And I just took on two, two employees. I moved into a shop recently in June. When I first started doing this, I was doing it part-time. I was watching my children, so I wasn't, you know, maybe 20, 30 hours a week. Um, then things progressed, and within about a year or so, I had the opportunity to move into a to a space. And since then, what I've used to do in a week, or I'm sorry, what I used to do in a month, I'm now doing in a week. So before I get too much further along, I really want to make sure the foundation is set, a strong foundation for the gross profit, what I'm charging on parts, what I'm charging on labor, uh, as well as the processes and procedures going forward. I would just like to know your 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 expertise on that. Obviously, you'd have to see a lot more of the financials on my side and what we're doing here. But that's kind of where I'm at. And that's why I'm actually looking for a coach at this exact moment. Well, Rick, first of all, I agree with the sentence. You want to get your foundation in order. Before you move on to growing a business, you've got to have the current business uh, properly looked after and formats in place. And there's various formats. Uh, you have pro- internal process formats, uh, procedures of how you go about dealing with clients, uh, pr- internal procedures, how technicians deal with a service advisor. I call them service consultants now. And uh, dealing with the client to bring that client into a what I call a client strategic business versus a customer-based business. That's a whole discussion on its own merit. We have to have our numbers in order, and I'm a very big believer, and I know Carm's classified me as a number person, but I look at the numbers to give us the direction where to go. Math doesn't lie, and uh, I nobody can make 2 plus 2 add up to 8. They're wrong. So it's following the math of the business correctly. The commodity structure and how we measure commodities in the business between fluids, tires, batteries, aftermarket parts, dealer domestic, dealer uh, foreign nameplate, then our labor component between maintenance labor, diagnostic labor, reflash labor, uh, and we're going to be getting into calibration labor in a few years as well, Uh, inspection labor, measuring the various components of the business to see where our strengths are and where our weaknesses are. And a lot of people think the labor is just based on price. I totally disagree with that. You have to have the right price for the competency that you have in your base. Uh, We're in a knowledge-based business today. And uh, being in this knowledge-based business, we've got to make sure that we have the right business culture internally that we continuously want to learn and build build on our knowledge. And I look at the average technician today requiring a minimum of 100 hours of basic training per year. And... uh, Nobody has disputed that with me. The unfortunate part is there's too many shops that don't do enough. Getting the right knowledge in my base based on the type of clientele I'm building and have. Where do we want to go? What is our current opportunities before we grow the business? And what I mean by that, Rick, is that uh, we've done the math and we prove in our classes that the average shop is missing between $25,000 and $30,000 net profit per bay per year out of the current business coming through the door. And the aftermarket's not talking about that. 
They talk about more car count. They talk about sales, activity. Uh, but the industry's got to be focused on productivity, which is our knowledge based internally. So what is our productivity and how do we measure that? Uh, we challenge our clients to move to what I call a management accounting format, whereas accountants use a cost accounting format. And the difference is in cost accounting, they put technician wages in as a cost of labor. And we take it out of there and put it down as an operating expense to show labor at 100% gross profit. Once we have that and we have all the other gross profit categories structured, we now measure the entire gross profit of the business as a unit. Where should we be? We establish those parameters. What ratio should we have? Well, I'll give you one ratio that's very important is your total wage package to your labor component. Your total wage package is made up of management wages, technician wages, service advisor wages, uh, administration wages, your burden on payroll, uh, workers' comp, benefits, all that forms a wage package. And the shop should be doing a minimum of $1.30 in labor to $1 in that labor wage package. The issue is, are we paying professional wages to the management and the team? And we're looking at the numbers. We want to have the highest payroll in the marketplace. We pay the best because we are efficient and profitable and we can afford to do that. That means my house has got to be in order as to how we're going to operate. And we have to check all these details. So it comes down to moving your business so that every transaction, you can calculate the net profit on a repair order before you close it off. Now you're in control of your business. And you will see once you start to get into this in the beginning, the 60 to 65% of the work that goes through your base does not create $1 of net profit. It creates a sale and gross profit. Because the aftermarket is not focused on net profit development. It's focused on activity. Why? Because we are taught by the commodity sector how to run a service business. They need their formulas to run their business. But they don't work in the service business. So listening to you, I believe you're on the right page. I believe that you've got the right idea. Let's get our house in order. Let's see where we can move forward. And you've got to understand your position. You may have heard me use the term CEO. You have to be a CEO of your business. How do I do that? How do I learn that? And then how do I manage this business for growth? Well, you can't do that when you're working in the base yourself and doing all the other little jobs that you're currently doing. So we have to reposition ourselves, and that repositioning comes from staffing levels. And the average shop right now is understaffed by three people, one in the base, one at the front counter, and one in the back office. You're trying to do too much. So I would say the first thing we do is analyze your numbers to see exactly where you are first. So when I take on a new client, the first thing I do is they fill out an application form and they send me their last two years financial statements. And we do a full business analysis to see where they currently are at. Now we have a discussion point. From there, we set a budget and objectives for the business for the next two years. Not to be met in a year, you can't change a business that fast. There's no silver bullet here. So we've got to say, okay, over the next two years, what are we trying to achieve? And we discuss that in full and agree upon it. So now we've got a format to follow, Rick. And to me, it starts with knowing the numbers of your business. And from the numbers, we can move into the culture of the business, what we're trying to achieve, get the team on board to understanding key numbers as well, which is mainly number one, build hours and how, it, how efficiency works in the business. Right down to how we set labor rates, which is a mathematical formula today as well. Does that kind of clarify it for you, Rick? Yes. And the, to your point with um, trying to take on too much, is exactly where I'm at currently. Wearing all the hats. Yeah. So we have to slow the business down to free up your time. And that is a process in its own format. And we come, the first thing we look at is what is your average build hours per RO? In basic consumer business, consumer vehicles, we should be at a minimum of 2.5. Commercial one-ton vehicles, cube vans, we should be between four and six. On heavy duty, it's between eight and 10. If we're not achieving the right direct uh, objectives and build hours, why not? And we always ask why. We don't blame anybody. We ask why. 
What's our internal processes? Waiting for parts to arrive, waiting for client authorization, whatever. We've got to determine what it is, why the technicians are not getting. It may be our inspection processes. And that starts with a comprehensive inspection. And in a comprehensive inspection, there's no definition in North America what it is. So that means you and your team have to define what a comprehensive is going to be in your operation. And it must revolve around only three words, safety, reliability, and efficiency of the vehicle based on how the client uses that vehicle and their expectations with it. That's why you'll see the better shops today don't have these seasonal advertisements. You know, the weather's changed. Therefore, we have all cars are the same. They need the same service. No, we service it based on what the client expects out of that vehicle and how they use it. And we tailor it right to the individual client. And that's a very unique internal process. Hey, Carm here. And coming up, here a suggestion on how to push emotions out of your decision making process. Hey, the Virtual Apex Experience 2020 is in the record books and brought the best and the brightest together to create an experience like no other. I was so impressed with the breadth of topics and world-class trainers who presented at Virtual Apex. And Virtual Apex, well, they delivered on their commitment to the service professional and provided seminars dedicated to technician and business management training. And Joe's Garage and Repair Shop HQ highlighted the commitment Apex has to the service professional. The great news is that all of this was recorded and it's available on demand on the virtual platform until December 5th. So if you earn your living in the aftermarket and you value training, product demos, and meeting your industry peers, Apex 2021 will be your best destination. Mark your calendar right now for Apex 2021. It'll be November 2nd through the 4th in Las Vegas. Be there for the great homecoming. Listen right here to learn when you can start registering. Shopware's innovative shop management system will give you back your time and put more money in your pocket. Make the switch today and watch technician efficiency gain 20%, enjoy increased recommended service, and even grow the highest parts profit margins ever with the smallest amount of work. You know, Steve from Ultimate Automotive says, I love that Shopware lets you complete every estimate on the inspection. And we even have a higher ARO, receive more approvals, and have had a significant increase in revenue. With our previous SMS, estimating was limited because it was so time-consuming. This impacted not only what we could sell on each customer's current visit, but also what we would have prepared for following visits. Hey, your peers are happy. Let Shopware work for you. Book a demo at GetShopware.com. Hey, uh, Rick, I want to jump in here, and what Bob explained is how he'd like to see your business run, Rick, from, from according to Bob and all of his knowledge and all of his wisdom, and you actually have to say, hey, do I, do I like what Bob would love to do you know, with me to, to shape my business? Rick's only been in business a short amount of time. Uh, I'm curious to any of the coaches, and, and, and handle this in your, in, in your time that you have, uh, is it too early to bring on a business coach? I was just kind of curious about that. Definitely not. It's definitely not. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate that. And, and David, Bob? Getting started on the right foot. Good. Yeah. Okay. The sooner yeah. the better. The, the, the sooner the you can start with a business owner, the less you have to undo. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. I'd, I'd love to meet guys before they open their business. Let's run over to Dave, Rick, and let's, let's uh, Dave is the, uh, the second person from the, when we drew straws. And let's bring Dave on. Hey, Dave. Hey, Rick. Great having me on. I appreciate it so much. Um, from my standpoint, I mean, Bob talked about so many key points. But the first thing that we would do is I'd want to have an opportunity to meet you and understand a little bit about your business. We did have a chance to see some of the uh, um, dialogue and, and that you had written down. So I saw that you started out as a tech then an advisor, then a manager. So you've seen that side of the business and coming up. Uh, the next thing that we would do is we would send you what I call playbook. And playbook asks you about your business, some of your pain points, uh, some of the goals that you have. It's going to ask you about how many dollars you're doing in your business, car count, ARO, build hours, so on and so forth. It allows me to have an opportunity to look at where you are, 
where your goals are and some of your pain points, as I said. So moving forward, what we would do is we talk about system operation or procedure. Just like everybody else, we want to build that foundation for you so that we have the data. I'm a data guy, just like every one of these coaches is, is for sure looking at data because we have to be able to see it to understand where you are and then where we need to go uh, in the matrixes of moving you forward. So we have something we call the business flow chart, and that starts with what we call a manager sheet, a daily tracker, and then labor management. Um, our manager sheet basically comes out, and you have goals set each month, and it goes down and allows you to see exactly where you are to your goals as far as sales, gross profit, so on and so forth. Every day, each person in that business should know exactly where they are to their goals. Are they short cars? Are they short, short ARO? Or are we short gross profit? And how do we fix that? The next thing is, is we create what's called a daily tracker. And basically what it looks at is average estimate, average ARO, average close ratio, average miles, and car count. So what it does is it allows me to be able to look at that and very quickly discern, are we doing quality inspections? Are we doing quality presentations? Where do we need to look at? How can we go in and effectively diagnose where the challenges are in our business? Lastly, I created a product called Labor Profit Management that looks at productivity, efficiency, effective labor rates, and labor hours per car. Uh, what software management system are you using, Rick? I'm currently not using one. I'm currently just using QuickBooks. Okay, so that's one of the things I would want to work on with you is discerning and, and finding that software management system. One of the reasons is is because of what's called CRM, customer retention marketing. And that, that's basically when we're doing our inspections, you know, and we sell a job, there may be $500, $700 of, un, of services, needed services that aren't sold, where our CRM can pick that up and then in turn touch that client again. Um, once we build the system operation or procedure in place, as Bob stated, and I, I'm, I'm sure that Bill will tell you this too, our goal is to help you uh, work on your business as quickly as we can instead of in it. Uh, one of the things that we're going to look at is perception of your business, how you're looked at in the community, your reviews, your website, so on and so forth. But a huge one is the experience. When the client comes into our store, are we giving them a quality hello and a quality write-up, a quality inspection, okay, every single time, a quality presentation, starting with a 300% roll, 100% of the cars are inspected, 100% of those services found are priced out, 100% of those services priced out are presented in this form and fashion only. What the car came in for first, safety needs, and PM services. We want to build a maintenance program for that client, and we call that full disclosure, which means every time we want that client to know exactly where they are. Mm -hmm. um, on the labor side, and, and Bob referred to that, and I'm sure Bill will too, the productivity, efficiency, and effective labor rate. You had mentioned that you're familiar with some of that. Yep. We want to be able to look at that and track that daily. Not weekly, not monthly, because at the end of the month, if we're going to look at that information, guess what? The game's already over. Yeah. We can effectively fix it as we go with labor matrices, so on and so forth. If I have a challenge with a technician, maybe that's having you know something going on in his life or whatever, I want to be able to pick that up right away and go ask him, I mean, are you okay? Is there something I can help you with to help you produce those build hours? We know more and more that parts are becoming a commodity. Every day with Amazon, Rock Auto, what have you, we eventually, in my opinion, are not going to be able to charge and get the amount of profit that we do on our parts as we do today. I think it's going to dwindle more and more. But what do we have on the other side of our business? That's the labor management. And that is where we make our net profit. It is so invaluable to know exactly where we are. Now, the other thing that we want to do in our business is really create gamification. And what do I mean by that? Uh, people are either usually money motivated or recognition dependent. Okay. So if we have a spiff on selling flushes, so on and so forth, to help our technicians focus on what we want them to focus on, 
and we sell a lot of flushes, okay? The gamification is this. You hit this tier, you're going to get some money, and, and we're all going to what? We're all going to celebrate success when we've reached our goal. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay, so that's some of the things we do. And then in our coaching, we do marketing as well. I'm not sure if everybody else does. But what we're going to help you do is go out and, and out of your software management system, get what's called a predictive marketing list. We're going to go in and grab the right customer, okay? And then we're going to create a value-added proposition, and we're going to go out and touch those clients, whether it be direct mail, Facebook, email, all same branded look, same branded content, same branded message. And that's how we're going to bring the right clients to you. And then each month we have our coaching call. We set out our goals and we hold you accountable to it. Challenges that you have, we have what we call our business flow chart to be able to look at it. And then we move it forward. And we work towards our goals every day, as well as I'm sure with all the both the other gentlemen as well. Um, we have what we call our community, which we have our own Facebook page for our repair shop tomorrow clients. It's like having um, a board of directors. If you have challenges or whatnot, you go ahead and put that in on the Facebook. You'll have 10, 15 people answering you. One of the big things that I've always talked about that I learned from my mentors uh, going to classes such as each of these gentlemen put on is that I want to be what's called a fast follower. I want to find out what somebody's really doing well in their business that's very successful. And I don't want to, you know, recreate the wheel. I want to go in and see what they're doing. And I want to implement it into my business as fast as I can. So I hope that makes sense. That's the way that we would start. That's what we'd want to build, and that's how we'd move forward. So we kind of do a little bit of it all. I'm not sure on, on the other gentlemen's programs, but that's kind of how we put it together at Repair Shop tomorrow. And uh, one of the huge things for us is community. Everybody's in it to raise the bar, if you will. You know, the tide rises for us all. I appreciate each one of the other gentlemen that are on here. They've helped people immeasurably such as Carm and whatever, we're all here trying to do the right thing in the industry because we're proud of it. So thanks much. If there's questions, I'd be happy to answer anything. Hey, let's move over to Bill Haas from Haas Performance Consulting. Thanks, Carm. Hello, Rick. How are you today? Doing very well, Bill. Carm, you kind of opened the door for me here because I thought rather than just be repetitive in terms of talking more about what I would do or our coaching company does, because honestly, there's a lot of similarity between what you've already heard from Bob and what you've already heard from David. This is what we do. That, you know, we're, we are data people. There's no doubt about it because for me, it's all about decisions are data driven. If you have the data, you're going to make good decisions. If you don't have the data, the only way you make good decisions is if you're lucky. I haven't seen a lot of lucky people in this industry, unfortunately. Okay. So what I thought I would do is, is rather than, you know, going through the, the same kind of thing, because I think you, you pretty much got the idea. We're numbers people. We need information. We're going to spend a good amount of time initially going through your data, doing the analysis in order for us to have an understanding of your business, even though it's only been, what, just two years shy, maybe just shy of two years that yep. you've been in business. But the data is really going to give us direction. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a couple minutes, as Carmen just suggested, and I'd like to, you know, go through some questions Stuff that I'm looking for from a potential client that I have an understanding of, what is it they're looking for? What are their needs? How am I going to be able to fit with helping them solve those problems or, you know, overcome some of those challenges? So sure, that'd be great. Let, let me start with what is the one thing that you want to change that you haven't done yet? I'm bottlenecked. That's probably the top priority right now. Okay. Bottlenecked in terms of we can't get the work done. We've, we've uh, got work and we can't get it done or for you personally? For me personally. You as far, personally. As far as my daily tasks, my daily routine to bridge back to what Bob said, just be more involved as in the business as opposed or on the business as opposed to in the business. Okay. From the information that we received from you, you're still turning wrenches, you're answering the phones, uh, you're writing estimates, and, and then you're doing all this other stuff. Well, and you're probably doing the marketing, right? Yep. yep. And then you're probably trying to find time to do all this other stuff that we as coaches would really prefer to see you do. Exactly. Okay. 
Do you see any advantage to that, or is this purely out of necessity? Um, at this moment, I see an advantage to it because the 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 brand of of Ricks is really my own, and my customers are accustomed to that. So everything mm-hmm. everything that I do, uh, from the marketing to the te- I, you know, to the text messages I send the customers during the process of working on their cars, it's me doing all the work. They call in, they speak to me, they come, they drop the car off, they they drop the car off to me, the person who's fixing their car. There, there's definitely a um, uh, I think there's a huge advantage to that. Uh, based off where I came from, from a dealership where you tend to walk in and you're almost just another number um, to a certain right. point. Some dealers are much better than others. The dealer I worked for was really good. Um, but there's certainly some that aren't as well. But that I think is, is a huge advantage in, in how I've gotten to the point where I'm at in such a short time is because of the personal touch and the personal um, experience that the customers have when they do business with me. However, mm-hmm. however, there is, is very difficult that that ball sometimes is about an inch from the ground from dropping, you know, so there's so many, so much things, so many things going on in the background. So what time does your day start and what time does it end? Starts typically around seven in the morning, seven thirty. Okay. However, when I was at my house, there was times I'd wake up at three in the morning and go out, you know, knock out some work in the garage and put my kids in a school bus at seven forty five and get right back to it. So um, it's kind of, you know, as needed, but certainly more nights. Um, I coach my kids soccer. I'm very, I, I made this move to spend more time with my kids. So I also don't want to put too much of my time and effort after hours. That's very important to me as well. Absolutely. Okay. So I see you've got two employees that you recently brought on two employees and it, yes. it says that they're part-time employees. Yes. What do they do when they're not working for you? One is now in IT and the other one's in prefabricated construction, but they were with the dealership, both master technicians up until about a year ago. They just made the career change based off personal preference, but they, so, still, they still love working on cars and are still certified to do so. So the, the working part-time for you is an opportunity to do, still do something that they love and enjoy and probably have some extra income. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm still okay. in, I'm still in the in the process of finding my first true real full-time employee. And that potential is not with either one of these people. I don't believe so, no. Okay. All right. And that probably at the appropriate time you're having that conversation with them. Right. Okay. I noticed on your website you're open Monday through Friday 8:30 to 5 and you've got Saturdays by appointment. Yes. How many Saturdays are you working? Uh, at least once a month. Okay. And how is your Saturday customer different than your Monday through Friday customer? Uh, just their preference or availability. It's okay. Yeah. So it's, it's purely convenience. Yes. We offer okay. a pickup and drop off Monday through Friday. And if that doesn't work for them, I usually recommend a Saturday appointment if, if that works better for them. So back to the staffing issue of you being the, you know, the more of the one man show, right? You're working on cars, answering phones. And, and now we talk about pickup and delivery. How do we facilitate pickup and delivery with such a small staff? Uh, so within a 10 mile radius, and I am the one who picks the car up and drops it off when it's finished. But I typically do that before and after business hours. Okay. So that extends your day. It can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Currently, and, and we touched on this earlier about the shop management system, and, and I have to agree with David, the sooner we can get you in the shop management system, Absolutely. the better your life becomes and the easier for us to have data and do a multitude of other things to assist you in your business. Your labor rate today, how did you establish your labor rate for your business today? Started out just by the way you guys would not recommend is just taking what the guy down the street does. Uh, I I did that for a little while and then I heard the labor rate episode with uh, uh, Bob. And uh, actually, I think the next day is when I email a car. I'm like, man, I got I got to get a coach. I got to get this locked in. Like, I am uh, I'm doing it all wrong. Um, But then I, I adjusted a little bit. And um, I went by the um, the multiplier. I think it was four point three times the top tech pay. And that put me over a little higher than I wanted to be, so I bumped down a little bit because I, I do I, and I know where I have to be, and I know I listen to you guys. I know I have to put all that aside um, as far as you know, know my worth, know the value proposition, know all that, and I totally get that. But a lot of the customers that I have now are have been with me for a very long time. They're colleagues of of family or friends and uh, they've got me to the point where I'm at but I'm also at a point now where I have to charge accordingly there's that part too that 
So there's uh, still some with. there's still yeah. some emotion tied to your ability to about that make yeah. decisions yeah. and yeah. That, now you see why we keep talking about data, right? Because 100%. data pushes emotion completely out of the picture. One hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. You mentioned when you were at the dealership as a service manager that you had an experience with Chris Collins. What was your experience with Chris Collins like? It was awesome. It okay. was it was awesome. He was a uh, I had more experience with my personal coach. I got to meet Chris when I went to the mastermind group in his uh, office in Los Angeles. I okay. uh, met him for two days. The reason why I met him is because my general manager was a service manager at one time, and that was also his coach. So he was huge on Chris Collins. And uh, t- to David's point with the gamification, we came back and turned that on. It was like a light switch the next day. It was within two months, our effective labor rate, our, every, all of our numbers just the skyrocketed. The the staff was involved. They were engaged. They were leaving every day with, with cash in their pocket. It was a completely different approach, and I could have never even dreamed up without actually having the opportunity to have a coach like that. Your website was done by Kikui. Yes. How many website providers did you look at before deciding to go with Kikui? Just the one, I believe. That was based some influence, or there was a recommendation for Kikui, or how, how did that decision come about? I just kind of did some research just okay. uh, at the time, at least. And this was probably going back two years. Some of the players in the game, the, the larger shops that seem to be doing doing it right were, were mostly, well, a majority of them were using Kikui. So I, I thought that would be the way to go. And I also called them, had several interviews, went through the d- digital dashboard and the integration with a shop management system. All that was, was important to me because I was familiar with the importance of numbers. Okay. So that's why I like the Kikui because of the dashboard personally. Well, Rick, do you have any questions for me specifically? No, I think uh, if, if like the other gentlemen, D- Dave and Bob, if the processes are all pretty pretty similar as far as what uh, what you guys do. Well, look at I'm coming back in here, and I would love to marshal this. By the way, David and Bob, you are on mute. I unmuted you. Um, let let us do some more. Quite Rick, I I know that. Uh, Bill, great give and take, Bill. Thank you for that. And uh, do you have any questions for Bob and Dave? And let's get them answering some questions for you, Rick. Dave, you, uh, you've you sold some businesses, I believe, correct? I have. I had uh, three stores um, in Cleveland, Ohio area. So my sister lives off of Mesa, Montgomery. So pretty familiar where you are. Um, That's right on the road. I, I have uh, sold three businesses and actually was in the process of building my fourth store um, when Big Box came in and, and just really made me an offer that uh, just I couldn't refuse. <laughs> so at that point, I started, um, you know, Napa came to me. And one of the questions I'll have for you, are you tied into any suppliers at all? I am not, no. I have mine that I work with, and I would tell you that I think that could be a very big benefit to you, especially when you go in to look for your software management and your other things, because they have so many programs for you. So that's something you should look at with whatever coach that you get with. I think there's an opportunity there to really help you quickly with some of the programs that they have and save you a bunch of money. But yes, I did sell those stores. People buy your stores because you make a lot of money. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about is the bottom line and so on and so forth. And, you know, moving forward for you, and I've heard these guys talk about it. I think, you know, you're building that business to sell it. So eventually down the road. So it should always be a goal. And with that in mind. Absolutely. So, Rick, I can't imagine that you wouldn't have any follow-up questions. Uh, you know, I could think of a few as to, you know, and I know this has been very transparent, and I know there's some things that you may not want to ask or the, the coaches may not answer because, you know, it may be getting a little too in the weeds. Someone brought up, and Bill, it may have been you, or I can't remember, the accountability, maybe it was you, David, the accountability piece. Are you going to be a good subject when it comes to that? One hundred percent. I actually, I think when we talked, Carmen, it was one of the, the uh, key points that I, that I, I want someone to hold me accountable because uh, working for yourself, you, you get lost in the day to day stuff and you could easily lose track, lose sight of your, of your priorities. You know, working for somebody, you've got somebody that's your boss or constantly reminding you of that. Where me, if you, if you don't write it down and even if you do write it down, so another, another fire occurs and you can, you can put it off for several days or weeks and kind of gets lost. So accountability is huge for me. That's a, a key criteria, Rick, is that, you know, 
we produce a, a seven page monthly report every month uh, with the data analyzed. And uh, we go back and we say, we review it with the client. You know, we go in great detail by page by page, make our notes. And now you say you're going to do something. And the next month you haven't done it. The next month you haven't done it. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've taken on clients that I have fired in four months later. <laughs> Why? Because I'm wasting their money and they're wasting my time. I want to work with people that really want to move forward and develop their businesses. Don't give me a smoke and mirrors show. And so holding people accountable is important. I believe in weekly discussions. I believe in those monthly reports. I believe in weekly, daily data that you work with with your team. We set those parameters and you're held accountable. And so in our weekly discussions, I can easily find out how did this past week go? Did we meet this? Did you meet that? And you haven't met that? Why? So you have to be held accountable. I, as your coach, have to be held accountable. So we offer unlimited access. Anything you want to discuss, you text me, you email me, you call me, and we discuss it. So we work on a, a trust relationship. Don't take this the wrong way. I don't work under contract. I work on trust. And I have found that with my clients, that has worked for me. And uh, I know some people, you know, one, two, three year contracts, whatever. I'm just, we're not there with that because we're held accountable. You're held accountable. So this is the kind of mutual business relationship that I think can really move forward. Bill, is it music to your ears to hear a potential client say, hold me accountable? Oh, absolutely. I do this. Because I enjoy it. I enjoy watching people make changes. I enjoy watching people solve problems. I enjoy helping people solve those problems. I enjoy watching people become successful and be able to enjoy living out their dreams. And, and you know, whether it's small and just starting out or big or medium and, and you know, doing things we haven't been able to do before. And when I don't enjoy it, I'm going to stop doing it. Yeah. Amen. And so if I have a client that we go through, you know, a multitude of times of talking about this problem that needs to be solved. And, you know, two and three months later, we're talking about because I talk with my clients every week. So if two or three months later, we're having that same conversation, I'm not enjoying it anymore. Yep. And when I stop enjoying it, I quit doing it. Rick, would you ever question, if you're not moving forward, would you be thinking, why am I spending the money with a coach? I'm sure that would come up. However, I think there should be a long-term goal uh, and there should be a way to, to track that because I know it's a, it's, a, it's a long, controlled burn. I don't think it's going to be an overnight, um, an overnight thing where it's, no. at least not yeah. in my case, I don't think no. it would be. You have to be prepared for that. You have to be prepared. And I, I think that yeah. Bob and Dave would agree. That's the purpose of us having that information that we can analyze initially to have that foundation that we know where we're at because we know where it needs to be and we can help you get there. Yep. Yeah. But Rick, you're absolutely right. It's not like walking over the wall and flipping a switch. It's yep. a long burn. It, it yep. takes time. You've got to be prepared for that going in to say, I can't expect too much too fast. I yep. can see some things maybe six months down the road, definitely a year down the road. Do you find any comfort in this? It's small incremental change over time will get you the results you want. And it's a two to three year journey. Yeah. So if I can just for a minute too, Rick, one of the things that we use, I talked about, everybody has their format, but is a manager sheet. So everybody knows where their goals are each and every day towards their week, their month, so on and so forth. So we always talk about we need to win the day. Win the next day, win the next day, win the week. Start over. Win the day, win the day, win the week, win the next week. Soon enough, you won your month. As long as we have it in front of everybody, how could you be in a football game? Think of it. I like uh, sports analogies. But how can you be in the third quarter and you're down 21 to 7 and not know it? How do you know what you need to do to win? We have to make it. Everybody has to be on the same page. One of the things we talk about is system operation procedure. And then we need for all of our uh, uh, employees, what have you, to champion our processes. 
And that's how we work. We put it all together for them and we get them to champion our process. Each person has what we call a job block. Here's exactly what you're responsible for. And then we put it together. And that's exactly with the data. Then we can overlook the whole process. And that's how you know where you need to work on, so on and so forth. Setting goals, reaching them. In our community, we always talk about it's fun to win. And what that's all about, what that's all about is getting to where we're working towards. It's not always just making money. Don't get me wrong. It's about getting to where we want to go. It's fun to win. I am not sure we could go much further and do any better than we currently have in these first 40 some minutes. This was an episode like none other that I've done. I, I think it really reached the goal that I was looking for. Very transparent, Bill, Bob, David, to you know have a chance to, if you will, pitch and you know ask some questions of Rick as a potential new client. And I know one thing, each of these coaches have phenomenal clients great success stories. I've gotten to know some of their clients over the years when they're willing to say, I never asked. Do you have a coach? I never ask who. But every once in a while, people are willing to share. And then, you know, you get the great testimonial. So, and I know these guys have, you know, just an incredible uh, client base. You would be very happy with, you know, either of these guys. And I'm not sure what your plans are. I will have zero input in that. I think uh, if you are going to have a decision that would come out of this. I would love to know it. And and who knows, maybe because of the level of transparency that you've shown Rick and the coaches, that if you do pick a coach, no matter who, that we could come back and talk about that journey after after so much. And, you know, the, 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 the personal struggles on your side to engage a coach in your business and make those profound changes that you pretty much just saying, I got to do. I want you to uh, just give us give us some summary as to, was this helpful? How did it go? Well, I am truly humbled for the experience, all four of you gentlemen. I'm greatly, greatly thankful. It went great. I mean, uh, you guys answered some great, uh, good questions. You made some excellent points. Kind of really, I uh, think for your listeners, kind of outline the what to expect when uh, dealing with a coach as far as a process when you're actually hiring one on. So, uh, again, I can't thank you guys enough. I'm, I'm very honored to be here. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate it. Uh, Rick uh, Williams, Rick's Automotive Cincinnati, Ohio. Bill Haas, Haas Performance Consulting. Bob Greenwood, the Automotive Aftermarket E-Learning Center. And David Justice, Repair Shop of Tomorrow. Guys, say loot. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Be good. Have a great day. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time... 